And before long, the Ukrainian push was not just stymied, it was beaten back. With Russia now entering the conflict in full force and the West unwilling to intervene, Ukraine saw the writing on the wall. The best they could hope for now was containment of the separatists. Try and push Russia into their territory, and Russia would push them out. We won't return to a discussion of the Ukraine conflict for a few more minutes, because the status quo that was established by the end of summer 2014 would hold mostly constant for the next eight years. Despite frequent skirmishes, Ukraine's eastern battle lines would remain all but unchanged, as combatants on both sides tried to make incremental gains while picking up experience that would serve them in the war to come. Meanwhile, Ukraine would have no hope of joining NATO. But Ukraine wasn't the only sovereign nation to get a close look at Russia's new wartime approach. In Syria, the popular uprising against Russia's ally Bashar al-Assad had developed into a chaotic, almost schizophrenic war with dozens of independent fighting factions whose allegiances and blood feuds morphed constantly. The West, particularly the United States, had struggled to make meaningful change while navigating all the nuances of the conflict but Putin took a very different approach. By his publicly stated logic, the Assad government was the only option to contain the chaotic elements in Syria, including the Islamic State. Putin did away with nuance in his approach to the conflict. Either a force was for the Assad government or against it, and militarily they'd be treated as such. In Syria, Russian forces on the ground surged against ISIS positions alongside a crippling air campaign that all but leveled cities like Aleppo at an unbelievable cost to civilian life. As they did, Putin railed against the West while dismissing the Russian military's own actions, claiming that Western recklessness in Iraq and Libya had caused the crisis and that now he had to make tough decisions in order to clean up NATO's mess. When hostilities nearly spiraled out of control between Russia and NATO ally Turkey over a downed Russian warplane and their differing positions on Kurdish forces, Putin used the crisis to expose Turkey's complicity in receiving oil from the Islamic State, propping the organization up with what was essentially NATO money. The West stood by and watched, and Putin again played the bigger man, opting to retaliate economically and not militarily. When Turkish President Erdogan eventually came to kiss Putin's ring and make amends, the resulting arrangement would place Erdogan under Putin's sway. Through Erdogan, Putin would be able to subtly or not so subtly influence NATO while Russia remained outside of NATO's grasp. Within just a couple of years, Putin had managed to pivot Russia entirely away from the West, making it into a true rival hegemon rather than a petulant child with nuclear weapons. Its geopolitical allies were generally hostile to the United States and vice versa. Its military, its media, and even its cyber capabilities had a global reach, and its finances were no more deeply dependent on the West than the West's economy was on Russia. Perhaps it should have been obvious by that point that the next step would have been to try and influence the United States. But when Putin's cyber intelligence apparatus hacked into the 2016 campaign of Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton and released thousands of her emails, it wasn't taken how Putin might have meant it. An instance in which another nation was doing to America what America did to other nations. Nor was it interpreted as a personal matter between a Russian president and a former US Secretary of State who had made no secret of her standoffishness in the past. Instead, it was seen as an unforgivable slide, one that drove the two nations even further apart for the years to come. The introduction of a new president, Donald Trump, didn't do much to change the situation. American perceptions that Russia had attempted to install Trump would prove difficult to shake, and Trump himself ended up being less of a partner for Putin and more of a political tool. Of course, that tool was helpful by itself, but Trump's influence was not nearly enough to undo the backsliding in relations between Russia and its biggest global rival. In fact, by now, Putin's experience with several American presidents had convinced him that the man in the top job couldn't do much to change the tides. As he said in one interview, I've already dealt with four American presidents. They come and go, but the politics remain the same. When a person is elected, they may have some new ideas, but then the people with the briefcases arrive and instantly everything changes. It happens with every administration. The quote ends. Instead, Putin thrived off the chaos the Trump administration brought into American foreign policy. Over these few years, Putin and Russia gained quite a bit of ground on the US in international relations, while public perception in the US was divided on whether Trump himself could have been directly compromised by Putin's FSB. 